click. And we're live. It is Friday, March 12th, 2021, 502 p.m. Our guest is uh, struggling to come on the screen. He is here. Um, this gives me a moment before he shows up uh, on the screen to talk a little bit about what's going to happen this weekend. At 2 a.m. on Sunday morning, we will go through a ritual that was invented by Benjamin Franklin, where we will turn our clocks forward and the hour of 2 to 3 a.m. will not take place because we will be entering Eastern Daylight Savings Time. May those words uh, be eradicated from the face of the universe, or as we say in the Passover Seder, uh, eradicated from under the face of the eternal. Um, uh, so it's a good time to have a debate about whether uh, we should continue this ridiculous ritual of time pretense, um, whether we should move to a more advanced sense of what time means, and whether we should have standardized time, or whether, as our guest will argue, we should make permanent daylight savings time an option for states. So we're gonna withhold that debate until we can get uh, the uh, the opponent for this important debate on the screen. Love I'm working it. on it, but um, in uh, the meantime, I have a few questions wait, because you let's have, have John refresh his screen. Oh, he Is seems he to be refreshing his screen. Okay, um, he seems to be having a little bit of technical trouble connecting, but we will fix this. This is meanwhile the joy of of in lieu of fun. Yes. Um, can we can we have a moment? Okay, I just got him. Okay. Uh, anyway, so this uh, important debate started because uh, John Lovett, when he would have Democratic candidates on his show, he would ask them in a kind of coercive style, like if you want the, the support of the viewers of, of Crooked Media podcasts, you have to promise me to uh, make daylight savings permanent. And so I sort of jokingly started, decided it was time to turn the tables on him, outflank him on the radicalness of time reform and bully him into uh, debating me on this. He fell for it, um, although he held out for a while, uh, he did uh, basically fall for it and that is why right now we are struggling to get him on screen. Uh, we are working on it. It's like, I think that we're both trying to figure this out. Uh, he's using- well, He's, he's, he's using be, what? He's using Chrome. I've had him quit Zoom and now we're trying to figure out something else that's going on. He's working on it, but he's, so. he's wishing he doesn't actually get here. Because the moment he gets yes, here, Ben, you're such you're such I'm, a timely I'm, threat. I'm, like, I'm so <laughs> formidable. Oh my god! I mean, it's nothing like if we had finally bullied Putin into fighting you, and like, <laughs> so, actually, I'm not more afraid of John Lovett's intellect and I kind of am too. than I am of 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 Putin's uh, uh, judo prowess. I really have very little doubt. Uh, that Putin would not survive around with me. Whereas, you know, in the pre-debate poll so far, Lovett has the audience, right? And it's my audience, not his. So I actually think I'm the underdog here. Um, uh, but it's gonna, I'm gonna win by default can if we, he doesn't we, get on screen. Well, I mean, that's not his fault. We're kind of, we've had these issues before, but let's, uh, Okay, so do you want to, you've dismissed him and then tried to re-invite him? I've tried to bring him back in a few times, uh, and it okay. says he's accepted and is connecting, but uh, okay. he is uh, not actually showing up. Okay, um, let's give it a second, and then um, we'll see if we can't fix it. But if we, um, I would like to know as a preliminary matter before he gets here, 
like your 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 what is your argument even Ben? Are you, like I think you can state this without ruining it for John. Like your argument is like that we go we get rid of time zones entirely. Yes, my argument is that it is a very silly construction to have um, the same moment in time be called different things in different places in the world. And that there is a moment in time and it should have a name. And I don't care what you call it, um, uh, but there's no reason why that moment should be named something different in um, uh, St. John's, Newfoundland than in, uh, you know, uh, Botswana. And I think this idea that we've all gotten into your head that it's really important for seven o'clock in the, in the morning to be when the morning starts is silly. That could just as easily be 9 p.m. Um, and the inconvenience um, of having a um, different names for the same moment in time is Send actually in pretty one more time. All right, he's, we're going to try one more time. Um, it is pretty extraordinary. One of the things that I want to get to is that you would get rid of any type of AM or PM distinction whatsoever. Just as like, I, so I don't deeply care if you call it a. Uh, oh, there he is. So now his camera is off, but I think his voice is here. John, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah. You well, Hi. you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. It'll do. Oh. God, totally. you know, we can totally do voiceover. That's You're totally dis great. It's vital. disembodied voice of John Lovett is here. I don't here. really want, understand why the camera is suddenly not working, but maybe if I appear in a second, we'll have fixed it. I don't know what's going on. And that has so, happened before, so but don't worry hover, about it. If you hover over uh, your name, in the which should be in the lower left corner ah, of the yeah. screen, you might see a gear. And if you click on that gear, it will give it will may Maybe give you a, a camera option. I don't understand. There we oh. go. He's here. Oh, no. All right. Listen. I don't see you two, but I don't care. Um hi. You're here. Hi. Listen, I I caught parts of that. I caught parts of that. I do think it's um I don't know. Wait, I, but wait, before you get started, there's something we have to say. I don't think it would be good sportsmanship. Wait, 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 wait. Start making your argument when I am when I am off the field. Do that was my fault. That, that was, was my Kate's fault. fault. I, I was no, no, no. The time. and waiting for you. But wait, there's something we gotta say before we can even think about getting started, which is that we are not allowed to have fun anymore. But in lieu of fun, we are allowed to have an inane debate over a deeply unimportant subject <laughs> with John Lovett. And so welcome to the show, John. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Yes, so here's my you. question. Have you ever been baited into such a stupid debate through a coordinated Twitter campaign before? It's the only way I have debates. Uh, <laughs> because I have a... I have a, I, look. He says until he runs for president. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, look, I'm happy to be here. It's an honor to be here to discuss this important topic. Uh, I think you've started making some sort of, something approaching an argument for your position. Uh, I'm happy to, to, to hear you out and explain the why. The folly of my I ways. It's very silly. So much, anyway. So there, look, I mean, <laughs> look, can I just, let's start with it. So, so I guess what I'd say is I think that there's like, there's two debates. There's actually an important, it's not unimportant. I would not, I would say it's more than frivolous, less than serious debate about, about daylight saving time versus standard time versus switching back and forth. I'm interested in that debate. You have introduced a lesser, even more frivolous, uh, very silly debate about whether to switch to some kind of universal time where all clocks around the world are set to the same time all the time uh, for some reason. And I guess my question to you, my question to you, well, I'll, I'll listen. I don't know how to be a guest, but I can, I can, I can aggressively start. Yeah. Well, let's 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 do that. Let's go. So, so you, you ask me some questions. questions here's what I'll you ask you. Some here's what you have to tell me. Let's let's. I want to get to daylight saving time, but let's take this apart first. What is a problem that going from time zones to universal time solves? Thank you. So many. All right. Let me let me name three. Okay. Live viewers of In Lieu of Fun. 
Okay. At five <laughs> o'clock Eastern time, every day have to do a calculation based There's on their time zones. Don't uh, scoff, John. <laughs> and you know, we have uh, on this show right now, we probably have the former president of Estonia who lives in a different time zone and may not be heading into daylight savings at the same time we are Sunday night or so Saturday night. For friction of, of, of events, conversations taking place. Meetings. Second issue. Okay. When you buy an airplane ticket, when, wow. when you travel, yeah. assume, assume travel, mm -hmm. and it tells you what time you're getting there. Yeah. Right? in local time on the ticket right and, you know how long the flight is. and you have no way to know how long that flight is well yes you do you have a you have you um to, you have to go uh, i think no way is a strong term for an easy way to find out well you have to look up the time difference <laughs> yeah you look and up then do the math and you're gonna make a mistake in there okay so, that's, so i would i would actually okay that's that's all right that's a reason let's see let's hear a third Three. reason. Three, third reason um uh which is everything is scheduled um, according to the imperial needs of, of a few key time zones. For example, you live on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. big, big prejudice to things being scheduled to East Coast time, right? We hear people on the other coast bitch about that a lot. Um, there's also... Uh, you know, Greenwich Mean Time, which has a certain dominance. Um, and uh, I think it would be a nice thing if we all were on the same time. And by the way, what was the time that coincided with something like what we think the day should be? We're given to some time zone that would would now be never taken into consideration. So so okay, I'm glad you landed there. It wasn't one of your official reasons, but it's the only good one. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so let so first of all, I'd just say this: if what you're worrying about is communicating between different time zones, uh, you've all you've not really solved anything, but you have introduced a big problem, which is uh, uh, time zones are a really nifty shorthand. For example, I'm let's say I'm in New York, I'm on the East Coast right now, but let's say I'm in LA and it's 3 p.m. and I say, is it okay to call London? How late is it in London? Well, right. what I do is I look up what time it is in London because we all know that roughly speaking, there are big variations, but roughly speaking, the time on the clock in London feels about the same as the time on the clock in Los Angeles. You're introducing this new thing of, okay, uh, it's three o'clock everywhere, but, but in sun time, in a conversion you would still need to do, uh, you check what actual, you would check what it actually feels like what is three o'clock in London? No, you would just say you would just have to have a sense of what time people tend to go to bed in London. No, and no, no, say, no, what I'm saying, I have a sense of time. I already have that information for what yes. time people go to bed in London. It's called bedtime. Uh, yes, and it's, it's, like and it's universal. It's around. We. It's some. You know. Nine p.m. Some London friends time. you can call between. You know your friends. Some you can call at nine. Some you can call at ten. Some you can call at eleven. Some are late, 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 late night, late night people. But you know based on the clock. So you've introduced a new problem and solved that. Well, I agree with you. It is a a slight mental challenge to discover the length of an international airline flight. Uh, I don't think that's a good reason to change a fundamental aspect of human life based on calculating the time roughly according to the sun, as we've done. Uh, uh, for uh, uh, generations and generations, so I, I think that that's not that long that we've had. You know, a twenty-four I mean, hour clock. Uh, you know, well, we've been using. I, I think sundials have been around for a while. Uh, that's so, right. So I don't think universal time is a very good idea. I think it addresses very few issues while introducing several big ones. Now, the the, the point you made at the end, I think, is the only defense of universal time, and it was actually what I was mentally prepared. Uh, to push back on, which is this idea that, well, hold on a second. If we have time zones, uh, then, uh, uh, you know, um, people don't find a nat, you know, let, you know, work starts at 930 everywhere. And if it's, you're, a, and, 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 and if you have, everybody's on universal time, you're no longer stuck with the strictures of normal out business hours. Every location will find their own version of business time because they're no longer kind of, the the mag the magnetism of certain specific times in our culture won't wouldn't have as much salience. Like I get that, but the problem with that uh, is we already kind of do that. That actually already happens um, inside of time zones. 
Uh, and and again, I'm an amateur, so I'm you know I'm open to being incorrect. We're I may have, here. No, but, I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but uh, if you live on the eastern edge of a time zone, uh, which is where the sun rises a little yes. bit earlier and sets a little bit earlier, uh, those there tends to be a little bit of an earlier start to the day. All else being equal, you head towards the western edge of time zones. Uh, there tends to be a slight later start of day. Usually, there's a problem. Actually, it's actually a it is an issue. Uh, people um, uh, sometimes have sleep issues on the western edges of of time zones because um, uh, the sun uh, the sun rises later. Like time feels earlier, so there's some sleep issues. Like especially uh, in places on the eastern edge of time zones during daylight saving time, uh, the sun will set so late that it kind of can interfere with people's sleep. People go to sleep a little bit later. They wake up a little bit later, but the time on the clock hasn't changed. So that there is issues there. But uh, uh, those kinds of adjustments happen. So the kind of like kind of natural equilibrium that would form already kind of does inside of time zones. So it's really interfered with by the switching that we do between daylight saving time and standard time. Okay, can we all agree that we hate we hate daylight savings time? Well, well, John only likes daylight savings time. Oh, well, you only like daylight savings time, but you hate, wait, I don't, okay. Like, wait, wait, so do you mean that like, you, so John, you're pro the thing that like, like that people elect to do voluntarily to like realign their clocks with the sun? Uh, well, so That's here's my point. So um, uh, I would have said, if you would have asked me like when uh, a year and a half ago or so, when I was sort of just sort of jokingly asking um, politicians about this, I would have said, standard time's terrible. I don't like it when the sun sets at four o'clock in the winter. I also yes. don't like the time jump. The time jump is deadly. There's lots yes. of evidence, increase in heart attacks, uh, traffic accidents, all kinds of problems, uh, circadian rhythm. The cows don't know, dogs don't know, babies don't know, it's a problem. So I would have said, let's all switch to permanent daylight saving time. So what we should be is basically what should happen is we should spring forward one last time. And I think there's some confusion in the culture because everybody loves later on, on the whole, based on polling, I think, again, amateur, uh, there is a consensus, I think, that people genuinely, genuinely prefer so more sun, more sun in the evening than the morning. They'd write, they like daylight saving time, but everybody hates losing an hour of sleep. So people hate hate the switch the conflict of interest time. situation. Yes. They hate the daylight saving time, but they like being in daylight saving time. So, uh, but what I've come to see is I actually think that I think that there is sort of uh, uh, competing interests. Um, there, uh, uh, I think there's genuine there's collectively interest in having uh, later sunsets, especially uh, in the northeast or on eastern edges of time zones where the sun is setting at four o'clock in Maine, I think sometimes it's before four o'clock. That is brutal for people, incredibly depressing. Um, I mean, get into Scandinavia. I mean, we're talking all US centric, but like there's- It doesn't like, matter what the time is in Scandinavia in the summer or winter. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean no, I know. We're but kind like, of fucked no matter what. Yes, I guess that's true, they're fucked no matter what. Or Alaska, sorry, go ahead. Um, now, now what I would, but the, but the issue is that I think is sometimes lost in this debate is uh, inside of time zones, there's a huge difference. So for example, roughly speaking, there's about an hour difference between when the sun sets in Maine and when the sun sets in Detroit on the clock, because uh, Detroit is so far west in the time zone. So if there are people who say like, oh, we should only be on daylight saving time, um, you're at, in, in a way you could argue, well, then maybe Maine should be on daylight saving time, but Michigan should be on standard time because on the clock, it would end up looking roughly the same. So what I've come to see is I don't think that there needs to be a one size fits all solution. Uh, I think that what you would probably want to do is give states a two year window, maybe a one year window in which basically they get to choose. Now there's two versions to me of what you could choose. You could either basically say, hey, the, the, the evidence is pretty clear. Switching time zones is very hard. Uh, switching time on the clock is harmful to our circadian rhythms. It actually makes it harder to find better local rhythms. It makes it harder for people uh, to adjust. It causes heart attacks, it causes car accidents. There's no defense of it. Let's get rid of this antiquated thing, as you, as you said, uh, introduced uh, by Benjamin Franklin, something I'm learning from you, again, amateur. Uh, but uh, 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 what I would say is give everybody, give every state the choice. They can either stay permanently on standard time or they can stay permanently on daylight saving time. I would be open to another compromise, which would say, and if a few states 
because of where they happen to be located geographically, it makes sense for them to continue doing the switch and that's what they wanna do locally, I think that would be okay too. But ultimately what this really results in is a permanent version of mostly daylight saving time with slight adjustments to the time zone maps so that a few states do permanent daylight saving time, but they basically switch to a different time zone one hour back, which is functionally standard time. Yeah, so just to be clear, Ben Franklin did not invent daylight savings time in the sense that we use it now. He had this uh, then very wacky idea that Parisians should change their clocks in oh. order to maximize evening time. And I think that sort of influenced the creation of daylight savings time. All right, so let's, let me ask you a serious question here. Is yeah. this calibration of your position uh, just an effort to uh, not be on the same side as Marco Rubio, <laughs> or, uh, or does it merely have that convenient effect? Um, I am on this issue comfortable being on the same side as Marco Rubio. I have questions about his effectiveness because he had trouble moving this through a Republican Senate. So now it is a Democratic <laughs> Senate, and I would like to see some of the Democratic <laughs> members uh, take a greater lead. However, I can come to terms. Look, I'll say it. I'll say it. Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? Here we go. Uh, I think the Rubio bill is a good idea. See, I said it. Well, now, uh, would, would you be I comfortable like, if this blah, blah, came blah. to- I had to like, you had to like force it from like, <laughs> it was hard. It's in the sort of like way that the, the, the what's it called? The, uh, you know, um, Jackson Vanek, uh, you know, came to be known as Jackson Vanek or you know, this came to be known as Love It Rubio or Rubio Love It. Uh, that's not acceptable. I don't, I'm in. Like, <laughs> uh, um. See, because I am, I just want to say if, if the Wittis Universal Time Plan came to be known as the Cornyn Wittis Plan or, um, uh, or the, you know, the Josh Hawley, the Hawley Wittis Plan, mm -hmm. I could live with that. The could you yeah. live? Oh, God. The Cruise yeah. Wittis Plan. Jesus not that any Christ. of them have endorsed. I will just say, it, it is a testament to just how bad your idea is. <laughs> it even, like, thankfully, even the worst members of, of the Senate are nowhere near embracing <laughs> an idea that is so bad that some of these, these people have some of the worst ideas in the world. None of them are touching this. All right, so I want to push you on this. Please. Why is it uh, a bad idea? There are many, there's a, a moment in time that happens. Mm -hmm. it, it is the same moment everywhere in the world. Okay. But it it's has not. It is not because it is now. Now, now, now is happening but, everywhere in the world. Yes, Ben. But but and it has twenty four different names. Okay, I know, but that's but, dumb. And, okay, but it's not. Because every person, because time and language is a communication. And so basically by giving something a time on a 24 hour clock, you're communicating that this hour is the sun setting, is the evening for a person. This hour is the morning for a person. And so like we have social constructs that are built around those types of delineations. And so like the fact that it is actually the same time is not the point. The point is what the individual person is experiencing. And it is, yes, based, it's heliocentric. It's based around the, like, it is based around the idea of where the sun is for them in space and time. So I think that is right for many purposes, but not, it is right for when I feel tired. But when I'm interacting with people around the world, and we all interact with people around the world now mm -hmm. all the time, the relevant question there's no name for now. And my well, point we is- We call it now, we call it now. Yes, but but what is what is four hours and 11 minutes from now? So, so I, I just wanna, so, all right, you're, you're, look, obviously you're a man of the world in a way uh, that's hard for Kate and I to relate to, uh, but- <laughs> No, Kate travels a lot more than I do. But, but listen, so uh, here's what I, is this causing problems in your life? Are you oh, finding yes. yourself <laughs> things or missing things like, oh my goodness, I was supposed to be on the phone with my friend in Azerbaijan and Australia, and we all got the time wrong due to this antiquated notion of roughly allowing our clocks to track the sun. <laughs> I don't think this is a problem in your life. In fact, uh, it's actually gotten easier because for example, 
I have Zooms. You must all, all have Zooms with people at different different time zones all the time. The really cool thing is Google in my calendar it out for you. Does, all the, does all the advertising <laughs> work for you. But, the, but, but now you're you're creating a different uh, standard. Look, the, what it's called the, is winning. Absence, the absence <laughs> of the metric system in our lives doesn't cause problems either. And yet, I think we would all agree that the world's move to the metric system is a healthy thing because uh, it's more true. rational. Uh, uh, I don't agree. I don't. Okay. Agree. Wait, you now, you like standardization, John? Love it. You're losing yeah. me. You're losing so, me. I, I don't You're actually. I, I don't. Look, I actually find the John love it against universal time, against the I, metric I, system, I, I, look, against I modernity. I made a bad. I made a faux pas here, which is I don't want to connect these two things because <laughs> one is one is a place for reasonable conversation, uh, and actually, I, I actually don't have a strongly held view. I actually no, would defend. I would defend standard <laughs> units. I would defend standard. You mean units imperial anyway. units, right? Imperial units. Well, I don't. Whatever. I'm not again. Imperialist. Not, uh, the reason I would defend them. The reason I would defend them is they're quite natural and useful. Like an inch, a foot, uh, a, a degree Fahrenheit. They're a good. Um, they're they're just the right. They're they they're they're more uh, organic, and as a result, they're more uh, natural how we use things. Right. Like a person is 1.5 meters, 1.52 meters. It's confusing five foot, six foot, like the units are a good size because they're a size for, for everyday life. But anyway, I don't, I don't mean to take us down that road. Uh, uh, <laughs> on this question of universal time, here's, I think you have to step back and say like, what is the goal of having, like, what are we trying to achieve here, right? I don't think we're trying to achieve uh, for a very narrow purpose of knowing how long your flight to Kuala Lumpur is. I don't care about that problem. It's a very small problem for me. Like when I'm thinking about this, I think the goal is to have um, uh, 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 a a way of telling time that uh, for most people in most places it can is conducive to a happy uh, life with with um, sunrises and sunsets that are conducive to uh, nice evenings, but not uh, but and 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 good sleep patterns and uh healthy living right like that like just generally like that's sort of what we're trying to do here like we don't want the sun to set too early because it's completely miserable we don't want the sun to sun sun to set too late because it causes us up to stay up too late and uh screws up the next day and actually the, even that one hour of lost sleep that little bit of sleep can have long-term really negative uh health repercussions like over time even losing 30 40 minutes of sleep a night is like really dangerous for people it's it's really deadly so uh that is the goal. Your universal time, uh, uh, hippy dippy nonsense doesn't I, do anything to achieve. All right. I, hold on. Give me one second. Yeah. And add then add I get to respond, more. and then we're going to go to questions. Okay. Well, and John has to go at some point, but like, I just want to say that one of the things that people talk about and that is like frequently talked about in the debate about how we created like our school days uh, for children is based around an, the industrial revolution and the idea that people went to work at certain hours in certain factories and like that you're, you're working in the fields in certain times, right? And so like, I think that that makes sense or made sense. And we obviously do not adhere to that anymore. And there is kind of this, and there's a lot about the circadian rhythms of specifically of children um, and adolescents as they're going through and needing more sleep and like everything else and getting up so early is really bad for them. Getting up in the dark is bad for you generally. It's just like really disheartening and like not great. So like one of the things that I just don't understand that we don't kind of, if we're going to decide some of these things collectively, like, and we have reduced the friction, I'm gonna be completely opposite you, Ben. Re like, instead of universal time, that we all have like local time, that we all have some type of local time that we all run ourselves to. And like, when you make scheduling things, like we have mechanisms that like make this easy to schedule. So, so that was the world before railroads. Um, and yeah, the well, big, the, the big, I don't know, we're force, kind of post railroads now. I don't well, know. If you know. <laughs> but the forces that brought us railroads. So what, what we call standardized time used to be called railroad time. And the reason that we, they had to have, you know, normally just every town had its own clock. Um, and the clock tower was local time. And that was exactly what you're describing. And the, the problem was that then, you could, then you couldn't schedule 
uh, no, this was long after sundials. No, I, I know, but just, like the idea of sundials. Yeah, but it, it was, you couldn't schedule the trains. You had to know what time the trains were coming. And so the train companies sort of imposed upon all these towns uh, standardized time so that they could have schedules. Um, because otherwise times, you know, towns didn't really need to have the same time uh, until then. My idea is really just an extension of that, that we're all operating interoperably right now. And so it would be more convenient and less frictionful. And are the local communities in Washington, DC, uh, you know, uh, 11 p.m. would be morning. You could still have exactly the kind of evening that John is describing. Uh, and, you know, it would be set by local conditions. The only thing I'm proposing is that the reference point be in common. So I think I think one thing that you're obviously not considering at all is the uh, multi-year education campaign costing billions of dollars uh, that this would cost just to begin to educate people on the change. You call it time. spending. No. I call it stimulus. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so I all right, think, Marco. <laughs> I think that like we are. We need. We need. So I, I think that that what Kate I think is getting at is actually right. Like we did give up something when we realized that because of logistics, which have only gotten more sophisticated and interconnected, we needed we needed places to have a, we couldn't just have every town have noon be high noon. We needed something to connect them. That That is what led to all of this. I think the reality is that we do need within time zones for there to be a bit more flexibility for those localities to not, they don't, they, they should, I don't think we should have time, uh, the standard time, but so that those places have like a more natural rhythm. So like if you are in say, uh, 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 Western Washington, uh, the day starts a little bit later than it does in Western Idaho on the, on that's on the East, the, 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 the Eastern edge of that time zone. The problem is I think right now the time switching makes that really hard, right? Because all, because all those natural evolutions that I think would really take place, uh, can't because all of a sudden we're jumping around all of a sudden it gets earlier then it gets later. So I think one, one good reason to get rid of daylight saving time or permanently be on daylight saving time or standard time, depending on the state, um, is you get, I think, closer to what Kate wants, which is something that more naturally follows the sun um, by allowing places to just live in a time and evolve to the best, the best version of a normal day given what's on the clock and way that in the way the sun behaves in that place, which is ultimately what Ben is talking about, but he wants to take an around the world boat ride uh, to get to. It. I mean, basically, I, I just want to, before we bring in uh, 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 Dr. Reverend Hillary Livingston for the first question, I just want to point out that this has a, a, a real parallel with the healthcare debate. Absolutely where, not. It has no where, parallel. <laughs> no, it does. So I am proposing something simple, no, universal, you are not. And, and standard. Absolutely Everybody not. gets the same benefit. And that John, in the name not. of federalism and local conditions, is basically saying, um, you know, well, we need to give states latitude. Pretty soon, he's the word block grant is going to come out of Absolutely. his mouth, and Ridiculous. you know he's going to say, say things like incrementalism. Absolutely you have to... not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doctor <laughs> Livingston. I presume the floor is yours before Lovett gets a chance to respond okay. to this ridiculous um, argument that I made that's bothering him because it's got elements of truth. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I don't <laughs> know if that's what's bothering him. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, interesting discussion. Um, <laughs> ben, if we go to, to Wittis Universal Time, W-U-T spells what? And we're all going to be asking, what time is it? Because <laughs> we won't know. Um, Look, so transition well, pangs suck. And I know true. people uh, all over Canada who still use the word mile when they mean kilometer, or sometimes they mean mile, but they just don't really know what to say. And I still, you know, people all over the UK who are older than a certain age uh, still like have trouble with what's actually a super simple system, which is, you know, a uh, decimal uh, pound pence relationship with no shillings and none of that shit. Um, uh, so I'm not diminishing the difficulty of the transition. I'm merely saying 
that the outcome is the right outcome. And I'm willing to do it over a you know, 50 year transition time in which only John has to go immediately. I actually, um, I actually you know, I'm glad, you know what you actually do remind me of? Obviously, no, nothing that you're saying relates to healthcare in any way. This is completely non ideological <laughs> You do remind me of like, like night, like uh, like like nineteen twenties utopians, you know, like who just like like. That's what they, I've always been accused that's of. That's what I just remind me of like, 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 like. Yeah, exactly. And like, Riding and a like, bicycle and a handlebar bicycle. mustache, telling people that like cereal cures all ills. That's what you are. You have a you have a you are a no. Oh, that's what it is. You're selling snake oil. That's what this is. Ooh. Hillary, your uh, question. Okay, so my my question, um, one thing that I don't think you've considered in this universal time is what is going to become of all of the it's five o'clock somewhere signs? They'll become obsolete. What is there your response to this? What will happen to them? <laughs> Everyone will be drunk all the I mean, time, Hillary, it's, is the answer it, to that story. It, it, but um, you'll have to just change them to it's early evening some, uh, somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't quite have the same ring to it, but we'll work on that. Good question. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, man. Richard Wattenbarger, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, Ben, I, you know, I, I have a problem that your, your proposal is, you, you want to outflank John in how radical your proposal is. And I, I, I don't think it's radical enough. I think I think you have to go to metric time. So like the 10 hour day and have each, it's you know, measured and, in centimeters. And, and well, <laughs> guess hours or some or yeah, or whatever, or hours. Yeah. And so uh, one day, one deck an hour, but and here, this is a selling point on it. Now, so if you can uh, I have a little th uh, thought experiment or hypothetical, and I wonder if you can participate with me. And um, John, have you have you have you been to the Metropolitan Opera? The Metropolitan Opera. Yeah. Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. You've heard of it. I'm not, I'm not an opera buff. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so let let's say that uh, Ben and his wife decide to go up to to New York to the Metropolitan Opera to hear um, hear. Don Giovanni, and they said, "Hey, let's take let's take John. We're going to give him this introduction to the opera, uh, to to the Metropolitan Opera." And you say to John, uh, he asks, "Well, how long is it?" And you're going to say, three and a half hours." And he's going to say, three and a half hours." You know, that, that that's just ridiculous. Now, you do it in metric time. Yeah, it'll be shorter. It's an easy sell. It's like one and a half hours. So, hey. No, so, you know, no big deal. This is a completely normative, like completely bizarre. <laughs> like no one, like after a while, everyone's gonna understand that one and a half hours isn't like a fucking metric. Like this is. Yeah, but, this is but in the meantime, in the meantime, Wagner will have this. Capitalize on this. This is uh, his okay. moment. Sorry, I'm, I'm, like, increasing, I'm increasingly moving towards John's. John's description of this is snake oil. <laughs> like this All right, John, your response. I'm totally <laughs> from well, metric I actually think, obviously, I don't support moving to uh, DECA time. Uh, but, um, uh, but no, I think Richard points to an interesting um, uh, uh, point about the way in which our clock is quite useful. But that it that it that the twelve that the twelve uh, 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 the twelve hour clock, sixty minutes to an hour, uh, sixty seconds to a minute. Like it is harder to do math with, right? It's harder. It's not as like, it's not as it's not as quick to like divide things in half. Yeah, it's a little problem we all have all the time. We're like, wait a second, it's two and a half hours. So that's thirty minutes, not 0.5. It's like a little bit. You kind of do a little bit of that once in a while. But what's nice about an hour is it's a really good unit of time, right? Like an hour. Like if you go to ten hours a day, a time an hour is enormous. An hour. Yeah, is how enormous. much of that is constructed, John? Like there's how much reason, of that is there's a reason used to an hour, and so an hour is like the thing that feels like a reasonable amount of time. I, I think mm, maybe that's a chicken. Maybe it's a little bit of a you know I'm just a, like, like uncertainty principle thing. Like you don't know that that's like there's nothing empirically about that period, but like maybe it's just sorry. Well, no, 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 no. I think you're right. I mean, I think. I think there's nothing special about 60 minutes versus 55 or 65, but I do think there is something that's clearly well, like, a show with Barbara Walters and the other. Is, sorry. <laughs> no. But but like 
30 minutes, 60 minutes, like these are good lengths of time for us to do things in They're They're just, it's a useful amount of time. We can really wrap our heads around it. Um, so that's my sort of defense of the old way. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah. Oh, I okay. Think, I just oh, want to say really on the nice. idea, on the idea of metric time, I have no objection to it. The second has immense scientific importance um, and you would really screw up uh, a lot of uh, scientific reporting if you used something other than the second. The rest of time based on that, how you amalgamate seconds uh, is not deeply important. Uh, and I favor uh, the most rational one that would disrupt the most people's lives possible. Big blue blogger, the floor wait, wait, is yours. Wait, you I want to get the response to DECA time. Yeah, I just really quickly wanted to say that, like, I just think that there's something super important. So, like, one of the things that I realized about time and seconds and minutes was that, like, it meant something totally different. Five minutes before I had to come on to, like, a show or do, like, I don't know, something like an interview with NBC, like, would mean one thing when I was, like, in my apartment and rushing around my apartment. But when I was in, like, a house and I had a home and we were doing, like, I don't know, like, I just kind of realized that like five minutes you could do a lot of stuff outdoors for example in five minutes you could run out and gather all the tomatoes off of your plants and all of the beans and grab the mail and come running back inside and put them all down in the kitchen and then like sit down and do your NBC interview and like I know that sounds like a silly like kind of thing but I really actually think that there's like something interesting and relative about that and that like it completely changed my like re like my understanding of like oh I only have five minutes to be at a place if five minutes felt so much longer in a cab waiting yeah. to get to a studio and then like five minutes felt like I don't know so anyways that's just kind of what was my only point was that well, no, no, I agree. I mean, one thing I, I know that like from like news producers and, and they'll say like, all right, you have a three minute segment. It feels short. Sit in total silence for three minutes. It's a long yeah. time. It is so hard. Right. Completely. Big blue blogger. Do you the have floor is yours. Yeah. Oh, you're, you. uh, you're inaudible. Uh, Hang on. Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. And a word he does here. I know you're good now. You're good. Uh, I don't see a mute. We can hear you now. Control. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Uh, excellent. Uh, a Ben's proposal, it may seem frivolous to some people, um, but yeah. to give it a fair chance, I started drinking at five o'clock Paris time today. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually a brilliant idea. Yeah. I, so if we all I go at the same time, Paris time, Greenwich time, it, it could work out for the on Friday. So I'm all for it. Then you. Um, my, my question is a little off topic. It's actually totally off topic, which may be a relief for John. Um, John, <laughs> in the conversation that you doubtless had today with Biden speech writers, it's now 22 hours since the big speech, um, or the conversation you had in your head that you imagined you had with his speech writers, uh, what what did you tell them about last night's speech? Um, what are the lessons learned for next time? And how, how different is their job writing for a limited orator like Biden as opposed to a gifted one like Obama? Um, I, you broke up a little bit, but I'll just say, I, I'll, I'll, uh, but I, I, I feel like I, I understand what you're generally asking. I think I am, look, I was, um, I was rough on Biden during the primaries uh, and I wasn't sold on Joe Biden, um, but uh, uh, it is an extraordinary thing. You know, there's a real parallel to me between um, Barack Obama as a candidate and Barack Obama as a president and Joe Biden as a candidate and Joe Biden as a president. Barack Obama runs on hope and change, but ultimately in the final weeks of the election, what makes him, I think, what helps him become president is yes, he is running to change to change Washington, but he carries himself with a seriousness of purpose and a sense of responsibility that in the midst of a final cr financial crisis became one of the most important aspects of why uh, uh, he should be president. And it was and it was not actually at the core of why he was running. Joe Biden uh, runs, I think, because he thought he had to do it to beat Trump uh, and uh, uh, is uh, talking about restoring the soul of this country. Um, 
But and that was the centerpiece of his campaign. It was the through line through his whole campaign. But ultimately, I think in the what makes him the right person to be president is the fact that he is a person that was emerged from grief and is propelled by grief and understands grief and understands how to talk to a country in mourning in a way that is unique to him and quite incredibly powerful. And so what was not ultimately the reason he embarked on the campaign becomes central to the reason he's the right person uh, to become and be president. And I think what is, a, is remarkable is that how extraordinarily good a job he has done at striking the right tone uh, in, in, his public, in his public speeches, in his uh, conduct at the White House, in the, in the uh, model he's setting for the rest of the White House team, uh, in their focus, in their not being drawn into Twitter arguments. So I am genuinely like so uh, proud of where of, of, of how Joe Biden has spoken to the country and the speeches that he has given. And I felt that uh, in what he delivered last night. And, you know, it is that that's sort of where I'm at. I am like, I think that there's going to be a lot of big fights to come. Um, but I also think just the way he has thought about grief, about moving forward, about about unity, I, that it has been, I think there was some fear early on that, you know, he would talk about an epiphany and Republicans are going to wake up and they've really moved to a version of unity that I think is important. And I've joked about it, but it's like, you know, there's a three step part step process for unity, which is uh, um, uh, uh, argue from a shared set of facts, treat people you disagree with, with respect, uh, even if your disagreements are strong and don't burn the capital down. Uh, and he has fulfilled that uh, every step of the way. And he has, I think, um, uh, 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 and I think we saw that in the speech. That's my, that's my, and, and can I just add to that actually, I, I mean, while we're, while we've pivoted to a serious matter, um, there's a fourth element to the unity that he's talking about, which is that the, uh, support and acquiescence of Republican senators is not the same thing as the support and, and acquiescence of Republicans. And the disparity between the poll data on the rescue plan and the support it received in uh, the House and Senate is among Republicans is really dramatic. And, you know, uh, his fundamental promise was not to try to bring Congress together, it was try to, to try to bring the country together. And those are maybe very different, they're certainly very different theoretical propositions, uh, they may be very different practical propositions as well. Yeah, I mean, I think what I have been struck by is uh, in everything that he has done, unity is not something you ask for, it's something you fight for, and it's not something someone else can offer you. It's something you can offer. Uh, and I think that that's really important because uh, in, I think it has shifted the conversation that 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 bipartisanship, that unity, that that no part that that a group of Republican senators or House members don't have a veto on bipartisanship or on unity. And I think that that has been incredibly smart. Yeah, it's all about like, I, I completely agree with that. It's like, the, oh, I think that the, like having that sh shift in mentality to the idea that like unity is a point of power is actually like is huge politically. Like, I just think that there is like, there's, it just has completely changed. I think the, the last couple of, the last couple of months, but sorry. Hello, Daniel. Da Daniel, your, your yeah. question, trivial, funny, or serious is welcome. And this is my last one that I got a bowl. Yep. All right. Um, ben, how would you uh, prevent mass confusion in the uh, transfer to universal time? Oh, let me let me let me take that one. He could not and he would not. There's another no, reason it is so fundamentally stupid. I would not I would even not aspire it. to. And, and I know that what the point of this is rationality. Ben, I'm not gonna let you I'm not gonna let you speak. Your idea is too dumb, and it is a testament <laughs> to how broken our politics are that, that the lightning rod of your dumb idea has drawn all the questions. We could have had an important and interesting a set of questions about daylight saving time and what the actual policy solution should be. And there's only a few ways we could go and we have to sort that out, but we can't. Why? Because because uh, uh, utopian, uh, hippy dippy, uh, 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 impractical, political uh, firebrands, I got a compliment at the end, have, got, have forced us to debate universal time versus standard time. And it has, uh, uh, frankly, uh, it has been a huge, Huge problem. All Huge right, problem. so before you go, John Lovett, we mm -hmm. submitted this question 
to a pre-debate poll. We are now putting it on, a, on, a, on the post-debate poll. You had 64%, 64.1% of the vote in the pre-debate poll. I had only 12.5%. So we're going to see did uh, who gained ground here. Now, um, Come on, people. so. Come on, people. And we're well, going to say, I mean, it looks. Come on, looks, people. It doesn't look good for Ben. It's like <laughs> <laughs> losing on my own it's like show. It's like the take away. <laughs> like, uh, um, we're okay. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, so moving. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll see. So, no, uh, it's interesting how him. little the numbers moved in either direction. Um, but, you do remember you started with 12%, right, Ben? I started with 12% and I've gained 2%. So um, I'm going to call this uh, a moral victory because I oh, gained Adam, ground. Give me a 12%. You know what kind of questions in polling get a 12% result? Do you have yeah, a but... heinous shit people support at 12%? <laughs> Do you, do you know, like, point, so really bad Mitch stuff. McConnell polls <laughs> higher than 12%. Yeah, you are, your idea is less popular than Congress. Uh, <laughs> John Lovett, you're a great American. Good to uh, see you both. You're, a, you're, you're a terrible sport. Um, uh, <laughs> you should, sport. You should come back <laughs> under, under less combative circumstances. I don't think so. All right. This we'll combative. Come, this combative. Well, this combative <laughs> every time. This we will see fun. you soon. Thank Bye, you everybody. so much. Fun. Bye, John. Oh, well, man. Folks. Well, that was a real kind of blowback to uh, to, uh, to Pugilism Week. Yeah, the hardest Holy core shit. days of Pugilism Week. I just like, want to say, really Greek, Greek chorus, God. you guys, what Great. good are you if you will not cast a, uh, a, a throwaway vote for me against an outside interloper who has a better <laughs> argument than I do? I mean, come on. I mean, like, I hadn't. I had been waiting. I I think that there was part of me that was like very, very much waiting for there to be more to your argument than what I thought was in your argument, <laughs> and I was just like holding out hope that in this day when finally we got John Lovett on that like I would hear your whole argument and no it is just as bad as I like thought it I was. I want to say first of all I'm now at 17 8 almost 18 percent uh of the vote so I gained six percent over the course of this debate you know you gain six percent per hour before and you know it Ben you're you just have a majority your people don't even know about universal time. If you just keep fighting the good fight, they will eventually agree with you. This is what Phyllis Schlafly said, and you know George Wallace, and there's a lot of other good people you could stand behind. <laughs> like, <laughs> I am, I am, uh, um, uh, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep working this issue. Uh, before you know it, it'll be. Think about your universal time gambit. She tolerates it. I also have <laughs> other highly capricious views about things. I oppose the wind chill factor. Um, oh well, like all reasonable people oppose the wind chill factor. The wind chill factor is bullshit. Like, well, no, most people love the wind chill factor because well, it that's lets just them. They like to make them feel hardcore. Yeah, exactly. It makes them feel like they're um, like they've suffered more than they really have. Um, all right, we are, we will be back tomorrow at 2200 Universal Time. Um, that it'll be- a funny show. Do we, have, do we have a guest tomorrow, Kate? No, it's Saturday. It's just- Oh, I, I thought we were going to do a, a guest that tomorrow. That person couldn't do it because ah. they're being barred from doing talking engagements. So, all right, so it'll be uh, just yeah. us. Sunday, like there's a mystery guest. Who's our mystery guest on Sunday? Oh, God, I almost told you. As if I knew. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, so all of that will start 23 hours, 54 minutes from now. Can we walk be... between the east and west side of my apartment and, like, by millisecond. And then and 
tell and, you what time it is. You know, the sun will be, uh, the same sunset will be later on the other side of the apartment than it is on this side. Uh, 23 hours, 54 minutes from now. Wherever and, the fuck you are. And until <laughs> then, Kay. Stop laughing. Uh, <laughs> we don't have fun anymore. But thank God no one listens to Ben about Universal Time. Well, I just want to say, like, what other show can you watch where the host self consciously brings a highly intelligent person with a better <laughs> argument to I argue? We can have a whole, co I'm hoping to have a conversation about that tomorrow because I thought it was exceptional. I thought that part of this was amazing. You're in, but the, the substantive nature of your conversation is one in which I cannot adhere to this. And I am open to new things and changing my priors, but. You know, you want to get rid of marriage, but you want to keep time? Okay, Come well, on. Do some, some horse trading. I'll see you <laughs>